What is going on guys? Aaron, your friendly neighborhood jackass of all trades here for yet another video, a DIY video, sort of going through powder coating. We're gonna be powder coating some fitness equipment and the reason that I decided to get this powder coating at home system is because I had a lot of orders for these guys. This is the upper lower pulley system. You may have seen it on Instagram, you may have seen it on YouTube. And the reason I decided to go ahead and get the powder coating system and an oven and a few other things that I needed to accomplish this was because I didn't want to send something out to somebody that they paid money for and risk it being scratched. You know, now you can still scratch powder coating, but it's a lot harder to do that. Plus, this is a lot easier than painting. If you're going to go ahead and paint, you're going to need to set up a big area with a tent. You're going to you know, mix the paint, stir it, uh, prime it, all that sort of stuff. This is a lot easier and uh, it's, it holds up better and it's easier. So I said, that's a no brainer. Let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to show you guys in real time. We're going to go ahead and do this one right here and we'll see how it goes. So uh, let's roll. Okay, so first of all, what you're gonna need, okay, so what you're gonna need, obviously, is you're gonna need the powder coating system. Now, I got this one at Harbor Freight. I think it cost me like 90 bucks, and uh, it comes with everything you need, except for you also are gonna need some powder coats. So you can get any color you want. They just happen to have black there. So this is what I decided to get while I was there. I got blue on the way. Somebody wanted blue on one of those guys. So anyways, that's what you're gonna need first, and you're also going to need uh, some gloves. Now, the reason you're going to need some gloves is because that the powder before it goes into your oven, it'll, it'll stick to the oils on your hand and uh, you don't want that. So you want to get gloves like these. Uh, I did use before, I use uh, some gloves that uh, my wife had under the kitchen sink. Uh, those didn't work very well. What you want is nitrile gloves. So black nitrile gloves. I'll have links in the description of this video to all these things that I bought that'll work well for you, minus this guy that I got from Harbor Freight. But I'll put a link in the description to one that I think is better uh, that I probably should have gotten off of Amazon. So you also need some hooks because you're gonna need to hang this guy up and easily take them off of where we are going to be powder coating them and place them into the oven. You're also going to need an air compressor. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything fancy because uh, you're gonna be spraying at 15 to 25 PSI. Uh, 15 to 20 is what they recommend, uh, or else you're going to be dumping powder all over the place and it's going to be a big waste. Uh, another thing I do recommend is this TSP. Uh, this is to go ahead and clean the product off before you go ahead and powder coat it because it's going to have dirt, grime, grease. You don't want that stuff on there because you want the powder coating to go on nicely and not chip off easily if it happens to be over the top of a piece of dust or dirt or whatnot. So we're gonna do that first. You're also gonna need a mask. This stuff doesn't stink or smell like paint, but it still has odorless gas that it puts in the air. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's nice and ventilated where you are and also wear a mask. And the final piece of equipment that you are going to need is an oven. Now, you wanna make sure you get a big enough oven that you can put whatever you're gonna to wanna to powder coat in there. Now, I went ahead and just got this one because I knew that the pieces of equipment that I was gonna throw in there would fit and it was the cheapest option. I got it at Walmart, I think it was 110 bucks. Uh, took out all the racks and stuff because we don't need those. Uh, and actually it has an air fryer, so therefore there's little vents at the top. I was able to hang some hooks in there. So we're gonna see if I can get it on that hook uh, without screwing up the product. So first step is I'm gonna go ahead and preheat this oven to 400 degrees, which on this guy is a uh, pizza mode. So. I'm gonna throw it on there and we will go ahead and set the temp whoop, to 400 degrees. And let's go ahead and start that. As a light in there too, so you can see how your baking is going because you're gonna to wanna to check on this thing. All right, so while the oven is preheating, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this guy off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this and I'm gonna let it soak on there for one to two minutes. I'm gonna wipe it off and then I'm gonna repeat that step one more time. And I, have the and I have the garage open for ventilation.
All right, so once we have the piece that we are going to powder coat all dried, uh, I went ahead and used a heat gun just to speed up the process for this evening, but you can just let it dry if you want. And we have our air compressor dialed in at 20 PSI. Now, I put it 20, 25, uh, it really doesn't matter, but uh, you don't want anything higher than that or else, like I said before, it's gonna dump powder everywhere. Uh, and this particular powder coating system came with three knobs. The bigger one is for bigger pieces, the medium one, a little smaller, and what we're going to use today is this little guy, and what that does is just change the radius of where it sprays. So instead of spraying like this, it's going to spray a little bit closer, a little bit closer, so we're going to use a small one because we're doing a small piece. You want to make sure that when you put this on, you don't put it on with the cone facing out, you want the big end out. All right, so once we have the tip that we're gonna use all the way down until the threads end, then we're gonna be good to go. Next step is gonna be filling this guy with the powder. And the cool thing about this is that if I drip some somewhere, I'll just blow out the garage later and it'll be gone, like I just did. So. Okay, so now that I have the powder in there and it's all hooked up to the compressor, I'm gonna hook this ground line up. What it, what it does basically is uh, there's a pedal that you step on that comes with this system and it electrically charges this project that we're working on and so that way the powder sticks to it. So whenever you're spraying, you wanna make sure that you have your foot on that pedal. I'm gonna turn this guy on and then uh, we'll go. Now, less is more at first. Um, you can always put more on afterwards, so go lightly, check it out, redo it. You can even put it in there, powder coat it, bring it back out, powder coat it again, so it's not the end of the world. Now, I've gone ahead and set a timer for 20 minutes on this guy. 20 minutes seemed to work really well uh, with the 11 gauge steel, but this is, this is quite a bit thicker uh, in some parts on this. So I am going to keep an eye on it, and if it doesn't look like it's done, I'm gonna give it a little bit more time. So uh, it's kind of an experiment here. We'll see how it goes, uh, and now we wait. All right guys, so it's been 20 minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and shut the oven off and then I'm gonna open these guys. Now, I'm not gonna take it out of here right away because you wanna go ahead and let it cool down slowly. Now, what I do is I just grab this infrared heat gun and as you can see, it's still 296 degrees. Once it gets down to about 80 degrees, I go ahead and take it out of here and then I can analyze it. If there's any powder missing or see some of the metal still, I can re-powder coat it and put it in again on those spots and then it's good to go. Now, while we go ahead and wait for this thing to cool down so I can show you guys the final product, let me tell you why you may wanna consider doing this for yourself. Uh, me, myself, I get a lot of stuff secondhand, either Craigslist, OfferUp, and constantly comes with dings and scratches. Uh, I got some J-hooks over here that I've dinged with the barbell, the paints come off, the powder coats come off. 
uh, so many different attachments that I have that I would like to do this to. The cool thing about powder coating is you don't even necessarily need to sand off the old stuff first. You can powder coat right over the top of this. So say you want to change the color of something, you want to go, you know, black to red or uh, from a light blue random piece that you got to black. All you got to do is make sure that it fits into the oven. Now, don't go use your wife's oven. Do not use any oven that you're going to be cooking food in because harmful chemicals, they stay in there. So every time you use it again, then your food's going to be in there with it. So just a word of caution, don't go in and use your wife's oven. She's going to be pissed. Um, anything you can fit in here, hell, even your bolts for your rack. You could put a tray together, put all your bolts. You wanted those black oxide bolts from Rogue, but you don't want to pay and get new hardware. Just take your... Uh, your silver bolts that you got from them and uh, put those in a tray, powder coat them, and then slide them right in here. It's as easy as that. So a ton of different applications that you can use this for. It's great. Uh, I will be back as soon as this thing cools off and we will take a look at the final product. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so here is the finished product and it actually looks really good. There's a little bit of a spot up there at the top, so I will probably redo the powder coating just to get that little spot where I can still see some of the metal showing through. But other than that, I think it looks great. Now keep in mind, this is a matte black, so you can get different kinds, any kind you want. You can get shiny black, gloss, whatever, whatever you want. So um, I think it breathes new life into uh, an otherwise unimpressive piece of equipment. So guys, thank you so much for watching and if you take away anything from this video, it's that anything you don't know how to do is probably something you just haven't tried yet. So go try some stuff. And also on the next video that I do, it's going to be a DIY attachment for your slinger setup. So therefore, instead of doing just a single pulley or single crossovers, you'll be able to use two pulleys at the exact same time and do your reverse flies or your cable crossovers. So if all goes well, that'll be the next video. And I do have some more products coming very soon. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing. And uh, until next time, peace.